Now we're changing the entrance. Uh, actually, you're gonna be the first one to know before it goes live. So there's a, there's when you go down to to, to Swizzle, when you're looking for it, and when you go, there's a stairway. So the same way when you're going out, you have to go up these stairs. So there's this blank wall. So we're putting a, a 40 times 60 Mona Lisa painting. Nice. With her having a beer mug. She has, she has a beer mustache because <laughs> of the foam. And above it, it's gonna say, I was at Swizzle. Nice. So that is the latest thing that we're doing. So, so there's always something. Today's guest, Danilo Vojovic, book author and the bar owner. Welcome back. It's good to be back. Thank you for having me. You just came back from uh, book tour in Italy. Yeah. Tell me how that went. The book tour was actually a lot of fun. It was good. It was, it was the book tour and the bar tour. So we combined both uh, in the same package. So what we did was we did three cities. Uh, obviously, you know, the pop-up in culture or popping up or doing a guest shift is very popular. As, as a, a lot of people and a lot of bars are doing it, you know, you're opening new markets and, and then the cities that you're not pr probably residenting in get a chance to experience you. Uh, this was also, as I said, Swizzle, a uh, rum bar and drinkery representative of, but the book was also the, the main point. So we did, uh, we landed in Rome and it was, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. We, uh, when I say we, it was me and my wife, she does all the you know the the media and, and, and stuff so we, we did we landed in rome uh we didn't stay a lot we rented a car we got a 500c fiat <laughs> nice <laughs> uh, i'm happy i wasn't quite sure if i was gonna be happy i was happy and uh, we had two it, actually all the luggages fit really good if you put down the back seats uh, so uh, and it was good i i was actually pleasantly surprised how good the car ran you know uh, very happy with it. Um, the color was very cool too. We had uh, like a Vulcan gray color going on and, and it had one of those uh, up open open roofs. Anyways, like so we went we went all the way to Naples and and on the on the long side of course we we said we had some prosciutto, you have to and some you know why and da da da. You got and, full Italy experience. Yes, no always. Always full experience and and, and it's um you know the good thing is, obviously, as you as you know, coming from Serbia and Belgrade, we, we're familiar with uh, with uh, driving manuals. So I don't I don't even know if they had an automatic. I think no. I'm gonna say no. This rent a car, and it's an airport rent a car. It's not like, you know, something small on the side. So they should have the biggest options, right? Anyways, so uh, we, we we stayed in Rome, and uh, Rome is one of my uh, wife's favorite cities, and uh, uh, starting to be mine too. So anyways, uh, we were there and then we drove to, to Naples. The point was uh, to go to Naples to, to L'Aniquario, which is a top 50 bar in the world, uh, located in, in this area that divides how I got to know Naples from like the new area, which is the new up and coming area, and then the, the old one. So we, we went there and, and obviously we explored a lot more. Uh, we were hunting pizza. Because when, <laughs> when you're in Naples, you want to hunt pizza, right? Napolitana, Romana, etc. So, is so, it the best pizza? Or uh, to be honest with you, uh, I like Napolitana the most. I think. No. Yeah, I like Napolitana the most, and 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 it's it, it's really good. We got to learn a lot of stuff about how it's made, and 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 obviously, you know, the 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 the, the, the art of the tomato is like on the pinnacle there, you know. So. That is technically, obviously, uh, it's the yeast and the, and, the, and, the, and the pastry or the pizza, but it's the tomato, right? So, so the art there is really good, and we got to know a lot, a lot of stuff. We met a, a lot of cool people. Uh, uh, I don't know if they're going to watch, but a uh, big hello to Antiquario if they're seeing this video. Uh, thank you for the hospitality. They were great. Uh, we, had a, we had a wonderful event there. You know, we were there with them. We, we gave the book as a present and, and we had a couple of drinks, enjoyed. And then we went to Sicily, went to Palermo. Palermo, as we know, is, is, is the capital there. We were in Sicily and we were visiting. So Palermo is east-west in the, let's say, northern part. So we did uh, 
or, or, or more to west, like northwest. So we did that whole western area and, and Cefalu and other cities. And, and uh, one of the best pizzas was in Cefalu, which is the craziest thing because nobody ever tells you, you know, about, about the small places. Everybody's about the big places. So, um, so it, it was quite surprising. And, and, and um, we, the, the tour there was great. It was very good for, for the bar and, and the book as well. And um, uh, obviously half of my luggage was the books. So 25 kilos was in books. Oh, that, and, mean, that means a lot. <laughs> and, I, yes. and then I had the other ones for everything else. So yeah, I had to pack very smartly. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, we, we did Sicily and Sicily was great. We did, I think, I believe, uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure, but we, we did, like, let's say, seven, seven days in Sicily and we found a great spot that was really near the, the historic area. And the historic area, you know, it, it's very important you want to go on the main street. The main street is the best uh, uh, thing and obviously, you know, great beaches. So, so after that, I think, it was, I think it was nine nights or ten nights, I think nine nights. After that, uh, we went back to Naples. So we flew, flew to Naples, we rented another car. Um, and to be honest with you, in Sicily, we didn't have a 500C Fiat. We had a different car. It was a uh, Igo. You know Igo, right? I, I'm more. I like more the Fiat. More? Yeah. Why? Igo felt like, which is very surprising, because we know the high quality of Japanese cars, because it's a Toyota. Uh, maybe Italian runs better in Italy. I don't know. I think maybe that's that's the catch. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, the 500C had six speeds. This one had five. Uh, I felt like it wasn't as, uh, I don't know, it wasn't as, uh, s not sport, maybe kind of sporty, wasn't as eloquent, you know, it was more like, more simpler, more, more stuffier, I don't know, it was, I just enjoyed 500C more, and I'm very pleasantly surprised and happy for that, um, and you know, you get to experience the Italian tour in a, in a, in a proper environment, you know, yeah, so, sure. so when we come back, we got a 500C again, and then we went to we went to Rome, and there we saw Jerry Thomas, which is a Jerry Thomas project, which is a very famous uh, speakeasy in Rome. If you're ever there, you have to check it out. It's amazing. The hospitality there was great. Uh, big shout out to them as well. We went to Drink Kong. Drink Kong is also one of the top 50s, uh, 50 best bars in the world. Amazing hospitality, and and I'm waiting for them to come in Swizzle so I can uh, repay the hospitality and and the. Uh, and the, and the really the love and the care that we got there it was it was amazing so they made our they made our Italy, it, it, italian tour the best possible have you done the bar hopping in italy yeah oh no every night was you know every <laughs> night was uh, was uh, was a night out obviously pasta always pasta i don't know why cuz the heat was incredible but i always chose a carbonara which is probably not the smartest thing you would do on a heat day but I did so, and, and I, I wanted to see all the different carbonaras, you know, and, and uh, there were some uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. I mean, all of them were like pff, out of this world. You, you go to travel, <clears throat> you do a lot of traveling all over the world. You went to the Caribbean, you know, Italy, all over the world. So how do you compare the bar culture? We were yeah. from Serbia, so in yeah. Serbia, United States, yeah. Italy, all over the world. Uh, so everything was, uh, versus the United States, ball culture. Is, is it changing? Is it the people? Is it the vibe? What's, what's the main difference? I think to start with, you have to go with an open mind and know that it's not going to be the same. It's not going to probably be... Well, it, it technically can be what you expect, but it's might be very, it might be a bit hard for that. Because, for instance, let's go by this. When you go to Barbados, uh, it's mostly rum shops, right? And there, uh, they don't serve you a, a, a poor like they do everywhere else they serve you a bottle you can take a small bottle a big bottle however size bottle but you get a bottle so uh, it's not bottle service what we what we know in in serbia europe and what we know in in miami or in us it's it's a different bottle service where you just get like a bottle of whatever like that chess piece you know and, and you open up a bottle of rum and you order some I don't know, sodas on the side, Coke on the side, whatever you want, and you mix your own, and, and that's the thing. And you can take the bottle to go after that. So, so you have to, why I'm saying this, you, you have to understand, okay, be open-minded and see what's going on there and just accept it as the bar culture of that. 
and just have fun with it. Though, you know, I don't, I mean, you can do whatever you want, obviously, but I don't suggest you, okay, you know, I really want, I, I'm a Moscow mule drinker, for instance, or whatever. It can be a caipirinha, who cares? It doesn't matter. And this is what I want. You know, try, try to, you know, try to do what, what the locals are doing, right? Try to do, and then, and then, and then see how you, maybe you can fit in your taste there and your style and just enjoy it. So, so I think every place is different. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, every place is different, you know, uh, you have great bars everywhere, but I think, uh, uh like smaller islands, uh, tend to make also cocktails that are for that era. Right. So as I say, again, the Caribbean, the rum punch, right. So the rum punch is the cocktail that if you want to go have a drink, you know, that's what you would want to have. Right. And also keep that in mind when you go to Cuba, you know, you want to, you want to have a mojito, daiquiri, mojito, or, uh, you know, similar cocktail, right? A rum-based historic cocktail. Who you were influenced the most by opening Explosive when you were thinking about opening a new place? What, what did you like the most? What did you bring from different experiences working at different locations? I mean, to be honest with you, uh, every place that I, everything that I have seen in my whole life is uh, located in either a place that I managed or a place that I owned or owned. So, so basically, uh, since, since I started, I have always been looking at details. Like, it doesn't even have to be a restaurant or a bar. It can be this, and I see your, uh, let's say I see your clock, your timer, and then I start thinking about something, you know, and maybe I, maybe I develop a, a timer for something, or maybe I have a big clock behind the bar. So I always resonate something that I see. So I'm always thinking about that. And as you know, in Serbia, we go out a lot. We like, to, we like to have fun. It's a good nightlife city. It's a great nightlife city, great cocktail city, even, even crazier now, best now. I think, uh, I think Washington, there was a, I think the Washington Post wrote that it's like the new cocktail haven uh, of Europe or the world. I, I'm not gonna lie, so I'm not gonna say which one directly, but it's, it's doing great. So, you know, so, so, so by going out so many times and, and witnessing other things and constantly learning, you know, I'm constantly seeing, uh, even to this day when I see something, I get uh, inspiration and then eventually clicks in into a cocktail or it clicks in into an event or it clicks in into a whatever. But it's connected to the bar business and the, and the cocktail business. So, so I, think, I think the inspiration is from there. Obviously, when you talk to people, when you meet other people, right? And, and obviously before... When I when I worked for at other bars and and I I, I did all, all kinds of events and traveled, you always learn something, you know. Even from this conversation today, however this goes, and we don't know, uh, it's just the start. I'll see. I'm I'm sure gonna, I'm gonna take something from it. So every conversation, every situation is something that I contribute to to my place or the bar world. So one of the biggest surprises for me and I'm glad to find that kind of bar that you're running mm. and every place you worked at is the people that work there how excited mm. they are to work there yeah. to be there to be part yeah. of the community let's say if even family that's how you guys call it and true a lot of people just go do their nine to five whatever they work for mm. just for the money they don't like going to their work but I, I think the people that work at your place yeah. they actually like going to doing their their job and how do you how do you build the, that environment and that's not an easy thing to do. It's minority of people actually like what they're doing. So how do you how do Correct. you build that? I, to, to be honest with you, I, I, I'm not building it. For instance, I think w how I believe in this is is if let's say you open up a bar, X, uh, let's call it the 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 watch, right? And you open up a bar and uh, you are obsessed with quality professionalism. You know you have you have you, you know you have a certain history behind you and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and 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 then you know, people resonate, right? So when you, when, you, when, you, when you come inside and you get a feel, right, then you kind of, let's say you get a sense of belonging as a guest or as a patron or as a potential uh, uh, person or a team member, right? So when you come in, you resonate and you see and you're like, aha, okay, you know, I'm feeling, you know, there's something that's attracting me to this idea that is now a place and I, I feel myself to be able to be part of it, right? So and then, and then you just become a part of it eventually. Like, you know, I know a story... Uh, Milos Zitsa, you open a great uh, bar now in New York, Fandimata, it's in Brooklyn. If you're ever there, amazing cocktails and cuisine. Uh, shout out to him now. So I remember his story, he would always say when he was um, going to employees only, 
he was like really wanted to work there really wanted to work there really wanted to work there so he basically talked the ears of the owners until they were like listen you have to find him something anything you need to give him a job right now please so so <laughs> So, you know, you, you, you see where you fit, right? Like you, for instance, you know, maybe you, you wouldn't want to work at a, at a certain uh, restaurant bar or at a certain, you know, maybe you just don't feel yourself like you belong sure. there. Yeah. And it's not like they're doing something wrong, right? Maybe they are doing everything right, but to you, it's just not a fit. You know, you, you don't like maybe, I don't know, how the management is, right? How the management is towards you. Maybe you don't like the working hours. Maybe you, you cannot listen that, to, to that music every day, whatever that music is, right? Or maybe you, the, the, you, know, you just don't like the concept, you don't like the offer. You don't see yourself as being a person that not promote, doesn't promote it, but actually you know, uh, uh, sells the product, right? Sells the food, sells the cocktail, because maybe you just don't believe in it, right? And you just don't want to waste your time. So, so I think, uh, I think uh, you have to all, a lot of dots have to connect. A lot of dots have to connect, and it's a process. You know, like, uh, it's a process, like, you, for you to have a long team, long-lasting team, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a long process. But it says a lot about the, for the sure. business. It says a lot. When people want to stay there and they're proud of it, that's, I mean, you're downplaying it. I'm just saying yeah. that's the fact. That's really, a, that means, it means a lot. And I'm really, you know, I know all the guys and just, yeah. I'm happy that I go there and I see how people are liking what they're doing. I'm, I like it. That's why I like being there. You know, go yeah. to some places and people are miserable yeah. working there, which yeah. is most places. Yeah. You don't want to be, but if someone comes in excited, even if they're not excited, but they're showing they're excited, yeah. that's also a thing. It's not good enough, but it's still something. A lot of places are not, not like that. I mean, that is correct. I mean, in, in, in the hospitality world, in this industry, you know, a lot of people say about, you know, all kinds of awards and this and that. And, but what people mention as award is how long you keep your, how long your, the team stays with you, right? How, how long is your, your, is your turnaround? Like, how often do you turn around your servers, managers, GMs, uh, uh, dishwashers, uh, barbacks, uh, bartenders, whoever? How long is that turnaround? Because that says a lot. Uh, that says a lot in, uh, in a lot of different ways about your place, right? Even so, people at today's times, they, everyone, oh, that's like 50 years ago, people work one job, they go retire. They, they perceive it as a bad thing. You know, no, it's a great not necessarily thing. be a bad thing. Today, if you have someone working, like you're not, not supposed to switch jobs every six months or a year. Yeah. You know, something's wrong with maybe that company, but if you change five, maybe something's wrong with you. So, you know, but a lot of people just always blame it on someone else. I agree with you. I mean, I, I personally, I don't know about you, but when I go to Serbia, I love to go to, to our uh, ethno restaurants and our restaurants where you, the server has been there for, I don't know, since before that restaurant was open. Practically, almost, right? I love that, you know. And uh, you can see the demeanor that it's like you walked into their home because it is their home. They've been there for 20-something years. And I really like that. I, I, I respect that a lot. I, you're I, not going to work. You're actually going, you're going to work, but you don't feel like you're going yeah. to work. You dress up, you go there, but you used to going there. It becomes a normal thing. And that's why everyone's happy. And you can sense that. It's so that energy when you walk in. Yeah. And someone says hi. And I, you know, I mean, there's a lot of restaurants, bars. You walked in and see an empty restaurant. And you know, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, the people are like hating their being. They have to be there. You know? So it's all connected to the money. Yeah. But also that brings people. People know it's going to be good atmosphere all the time. And it's uh, sometimes, oh, it's not busy. It's bu no. When, some good, good places are somehow always busy. Correct. People always come in because they know they're going to find quality and they're going to find great service and everything. So That is true. Like, like Mira, I, I, I don't, you know Mira, right? Yeah. She, she has been with, 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 with Swizzle for, for two years now and, and she was a guest before. <laughs> so, for instance, our new door person used to be a guest. Like Vadim, you know, he's a great DJ player. Um, and now he's working the door with us. It's just like, as I said, that attraction of you seeing something uh, deeper and further than just the shell, right? And then you understand it and you have a deep understanding for it and then you love it. Like Mira, for instance, what she tells me more often than so now uh, is, uh, uh, but I, I find it normal. Uh, but from her comment, I see that maybe it's not. Uh, she says that I love I love Swizzle and I love here because I can be uh, I can be who I am, and I don't see another option. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> who are you supposed to be? <laughs> you know. So so, be so, you, so that makes me think. <laughs> wait, you know, it's not even on purpose. It's just how life should be, right? You are you, and. 
PU. So she tells me that, it makes me think not, not what I'm doing at Swizzle, but like what's happening, like if you notice something like that and it's such an impact, leaves such an impact on you, then it's big, right? And if it's big, like what's happening, uh, I don't know, you know? That's, makes you makes you think. It makes you think a lot. I mean, definitely a lot of people are. It's not easy to start a business. It's not easy to start start anything, especially I a agree. business. I agree. And then thinking about it, walk me through your train of thoughts while you were deciding to switch from uh, managing or working in some other place. And okay, I want to start my own business. How I'm going to start it? How were you, what were you thinking? You know, it's always you have two persons, one on the left shoulder, one on the right. Instead of thinking, okay, you do it. I was like, no, no, actually, you're fine right here. Then, one, no, you should do it. Then it's complicated. Just stay away. Who you listen to? How do you decide? How do you make that leap? And we get all the decisive decisions that you're like, okay, I'm doing this. And how, how to fight that indecisiveness? Uh, let's move forward. You know, not a lot of people know this. I don't think, I think a couple people know this. I was very close to leaving uh, the company, uh, employees only at Macau Trading Company uh, in New York. Um, before I got, I, got a, I got the offer to become a partner, maybe, you know, now it's been six years ago, so maybe three, three months. If I didn't get that offer within three months, I would have probably left. So what my point is here and why did I start, you know, so... Uh, uh, Yes, there's good and the bad. I don't listen to the bad. I just say, let's go forward. Let's, fuck, let's push. What happens, happens. You know what? It's okay. You know, I don't think you or me or anybody is going to uh, end up being hungry. Right? You have two arms. Thank God. You're healthy. You have two legs. You know, you're not going to starve to death. So what's the worst that can happen? Plus, it's life. You should have fun. You know, you should throw that dice and just enjoy. And well, you know, what brings, brings. And what happens, happens. And okay, whatever happens, you lose the hand, you move to the next. You don't lose the hand, enjoy it. You lose the hand, still enjoy it. Uh, find something else. So, so I think it's that, you know. And, and how, how I got to, to do Swizzle, when, when I moved to Florida, so, so I touched base on that topic. When I moved to Florida, they asked me to become a partner at Employees Only Miami. And I said yes. We had a talk, me and one of the founders uh, had a talk at his uh, third uh, location, Bel Rev. If you're ever in New York, go check it out. It's, a, it's like a dive bar, very cool bar with cocktails, very nice bar. I used to love going there. Uh, still, when I'm in New York, I go there. So we had a meeting there, da da da. Uh, we discussed everything. We agreed upon uh, all the conditions, right? So when, when we moved to, 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 to Miami, um, not a lot of people know, I drew, I was designing employees only in Miami bar for a year before I came down. Man, for a year designing, architects, rules, city, da da da, craziness. And on top of that, it was putting a team together and making sure they're educated. So when we open those doors and the game is on, you are at your best. Because how I approach that particular opening is there's no room for error. And if we allow a room for error, we will close doors. We will lose. That was my approach to it. So every, every class, everything that we were doing was, was just to bring it as close to a well-oiled machine as was, as was possible. And, 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 and to, to come back to that story, how, how Swizzle, so before opening, a project was presented. Hey, you know, there's this space. Uh, the, the ownership group didn't want to do anything with it. So they were like, if you want, uh, why don't you come up with a concept? If no, no. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Even on top of opening EEO and, and the team, yes. And being in Miami, being in Florida, rum is, is, is a constant to me. It's, it's like, it, you know, when I was in Italy, I drank gin, right? When I'm in Miami, I don't drink gin so much. So what is the catch? If it, it, where you are, right? You know, where you are is what, you know, when I was in Austria, Germany, I drank a lot of beer, you know, and, and schnapps. When we're in Serbia, we drink a lot of rakia. Whatever the local stuff is, whatever the most right? popular thing locally. But, right? that, but don't you feel like that's also what kind of, what feels natural to you? It, it does, because the environment made people, shape people how they are, the culture and everything. Right. And they, that, thing, that thing didn't just show up. 
that's been there for, for a long time. Yes. And it just, not about, it happened. It happened out of nowhere, years and years and years of people doing it, and they're still doing it. There has to be a reason behind it. I mean, technically, you probably have two types of people. You have a person that has their own drink, and that's it, no matter where you are. And then you have somebody that's like, wow, I, I kind of feel a, a change in me, a change in feeling. Maybe I'm going to go for you know, gin and tonics in Italy or a Negroni in Italy or like maybe just Campari and soda, whatever, you know. So so the, the location kind of leads you. Anyways, the location led me in Florida to rum and I was like, and I, I, I researched the market and at the time there wasn't a lot of, this was 2016. So soon, well, seven years, no? Seven years. You're almost six. S six, yeah. So uh, at the time, there wasn't a lot of rum, uh, rum places, and I was like, yeah, it has to be done. So, and as you know, and I'm sure a lot of your viewers know, uh, a swizzle is a type of a cocktail, and it's made with a swizzle stick. A swizzle stick is an evergreen branch that grows in the Caribbean. It's the predecessor of the blender. So it's kind of like starting a, a fire, you're blending, or actually you're swizzling. And then the little branches that mimic the sharpness of the blade rotate and you kind of uh, mix, not, not kind of, you're actually mixing the drink, right? So I was always a fan of Jerry Thomas, and I'm sure you heard of him, who's, uh, who's a legendary godfather and, and fa forefather of bartending in general. If you ask any bartender, uh, I'm sure they will know him or heard of him. So he uh, uh, made the blue blazer, right? And it's a cocktail where you flame the cocktail and you're pouring from one side to the other. And, and more so he did uh, uh, partly for the attraction, but Swizzle has that attraction. It has when you're, you know, when you're swizzling and, and it's like, it's eye-catching. It's like, man, what you're doing? You know, you're not it shaking, is. you're not stirring. It is. I remember seeing it for the first time. Yeah. I was like... What, what is this? Yes. <laughs> that it was so cool. I mean, do, and I was like, okay, this is amazing. And even drinks are amazing. Yes. And first, I didn't, I didn't know what's happening. Yeah. I mean, you see someone like starting a fire. And yeah. then I asked, and I was like, oh my God, that's so yeah. cool. That's why I still remember seeing it for the first time. And also, it's not that popular. I, I don't think I've seen it anywhere else. Yeah. And I mean, I've been this amount of bars, or so I don't think I've seen it. I don't know. Have you seen it a lot of places? Swizzle, swizzle stick usage in cocktail bars is not, was. Uh, maybe it's, I don't know, it's not as popular. It's let's, not. Let, yeah, if we were to choose an answer, it, it would be probably it's not as popular. So I wanted to do something that's, you know, if how I always am, if I see it a lot, uh, chances are I don't want to do it. It's just, you know, it, I don't have that fire in me. Like, if I've seen it, you know, and I'm doing it again, and I don't know. It's just like it's so bland for me. It's like yeah, you're not empty, empty yeah. fart, you know. It's like, man, it's like... <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like, I don't know, you know, so, so I wanted something that was, that was more exciting, you know, that was something that would like drive me and, and, and something that you need to explain, you know, and, and maybe not a lot of people know, and it's, it's, it's just, it gives me energy. So the project gives me energy and I give it energy. So it's like a back and forward. It's like a return, right? So, so, so we started Swizzle uh, there and then, well, you know, uh, employees only closed. Uh, employees only Miami closed due to a bad lease deal. The deal, the, lease, the deal of the lease was bad, um, and and the hotel, the, the property went bankrupt like a year and a half after. Anyway, so so either way, if you think about it, it was gonna close. Uh, business was great. We did a great job. I'm very proud of of everybody. You should be as a mayor that worked place. there. Very proud, like very proud of everybody. They gave their heart and soul. It was a team, amazing team, uh, heads down. So, so, uh, but that taught me another thing. Like, so now, now it's not just the cocktails, it's not just the glassware. Now I need to start learning how to uh, make leases, how to negotiate. Things that people don't see, that yeah. you only get to see. Yeah. How to negotiate, how to make leases, um, how, how to read the fine print, how important lawyers are. Very important, right? <laughs> Pay your lawyer. <laughs> so, so uh, how important uh, lawyers are, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and just a lot of things. A lot of things, you know, and, and uh, they take a lot of energy and a lot of time for, from you. You know, and, and it's hard, you know, because if you're a craftsman, you love making cocktails and you love, you know, uh, producing new drinks and you love, you know, you know, that fun side of things. And you never went into this job so you would read a 10 page contract or whatever, or, or know how to make a contract or what's, what, what can pass, what cannot pass, 
what might not even go through, right? So you can make, a, I mean, you can make an offer and it's never going to go anywhere because it's, it's just not appealing enough in a, lot of, in a lot of senses. So you have to... So there, there was a lot of learning that, that took, but I think we, bound, uh, we bounced back pretty fast. Uh, Rebecca, who is now... Big shout out to her too who is now helping uh, Julio Cabrera in his uh, cigar venture. And so she said like, wow, you know, you, you bounce back really good and really fast. So after, after that closure, we opened, like, we opened a year after. So it took, quick, us, took us a year. took me a year. Good thing you had. It was how life works. You get to experience, I mean, unexpectedly, you get to experience something else. Yeah. And then you just translate that experience into opening your own thing later on. Yeah. You always think it's a bad thing at a certain point. And then a year later, you have your own place. You're opening and using all the knowledge you had before, which is yeah. really nice. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, all the knowledge was like uh, 20 years experience and up, you know. So, so every, every single day that I've spent was used to open up a bar. It wasn't one day. It wasn't two years. It wasn't three years. It was 20 years. All. Every time something happens and you know or you have a reaction or you have a comment, it's, it's, it's taken from an episode in your life that was however long ago. So, so it was definitely, everything was, was a school, right? So, so it, it, was a, it was a big school. Um, but, but it, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm all for like, okay, it happened, that's it. I have two days to be sad, to be depressed, you know, have a tear or two if you chose to. Uh, that's it. After two days, that's it. Buckle comes back. Life continues on. Buckle up. Yeah. Buckle up and next. Buckle up. Uh, have that seat bed ready for that roller coaster. And you never stop roller coaster. You're gonna fall yeah. off. That's you, you yeah. can't stop. It doesn't stop. Yeah. You have to go. With you know, it. I always say, man, we're alive. We're healthy. You know. And I mean, you, you used all that experience. It's a vast experience. Yeah. Then. You open up your place, and then from starting a new business, you know, a lot of businesses, I mean, at least Miami, I think it's in general, 90% of businesses, or whatever the number is, they close in the first year. True. So it's hard to stay open in the first place, not generate any revenue and make a good place, but you went in a few years from even, I'm not sure what's the time frame, but from starting a business to being awarded, you could tell what all the awards yeah. were, but yeah. being awarded for the, one of the best bars in the United States. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, I mean, Swizzle won uh, 2022 and 2023 in the top 50 speakeasy category. We won number two. Um, uh, that was voted by the Yelp community. And then with Time Out Magazine voted us fourth best speakeasy, I think, in U.S. too. Yes, in, in U.S. too. So, so uh, I always joke, 2022, we were second. 2023, we were second. So we didn't go up, but we didn't go down. So it's okay. It's <laughs> still there. It's still there. <laughs> it's good, you know. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, awards, the awards are great. But to be honest with you, because uh, I always look at how the, how the day before was at the bar. And to be honest with you, that's my main focus and that's my main award. So if, if, it, if it was, number one, if it was busy. Number two, uh, if uh, we had industry come in. I love when industry comes in. To me, when industry comes into your place, you're doing good. You're doing something right. Because, you know, uh, industry knows quality. And they come back all the time for, for yeah. like extended amount of time. You know, yeah. People rarely don't come back, so which that's the number one thing. Industry, I think industry rates you on, on, on a huge amount of, uh, how you call it, points. Like, like you, for instance, or anybody that has touched industry or has been it, uh, in it uh, for a while or maybe not even so, you have your rating system right and if if it all checks then you will visit or revisit so to me that is that is the biggest teller right and and keep this in mind you, you can never relax because just because you have industry in 2022 doesn't mean you will have industry in 2023 2024 2025 etc so uh, I always cherish every day like it's it's the first day of the bar and and I will continue to do so until I don't think I'll ever lose the passion, uh, but un un until I feel so. So, um, industry is very important. But you also improve a lot. Your, your bar is not like same like when it opened. You're adding new stuff. You're always working on getting you better. That's how you stay in the second place, or you hopefully get the first eventually. Thank you. True. So that, that's that's how it works. Not just staying and uh, even maintaining stuff, but you actually moving, improving, learning. That, that that's that's amazing. 
It's true. Listen, uh, if you ask my team, they're going crazy. Uh, they stay because, well, it's 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 swizzle, uh, you know. They can tell you, but I try to make as a more mo most liberal, uh, open uh, place of work you can do. You know, uh, uh, but I am I I am super detail oriented. I think about it. Uh, I'm trying to cut back on my working hours. I'm working that now. I'm trying to make it nine to five. See how that goes. Uh, so far, it's going good. Uh, but my team gets messages, man. I uh, this needs to change. This needs to change. <sighs> I'm really grateful for them because it's, you know, like, man, it's always something. New glassware, new type of ice, new this, change this garnish. This doesn't fly anymore. This is out. This is in. We're getting two more cocktails now. Um, uh, we, we have an event. This, this, this. Now we're changing the entrance. Uh, actually, you're going to be the first one to know before it goes live. So there's a, there's, when you go down to, to, to Swizzle, when you're looking for it and when you go there's a stairway so the same way when you're going out you have to go up these stairs so there's this blank wall so we're putting a, a 40 times 60 mona lisa painting nice. with her having a beer mug she has she has a beer mustache because <laughs> of the foam and above it it's gonna say i was at swizzle nice. so that is the latest thing that we're doing so so there's always something uh, we're expanding our patio by uh, uh, 50%, I believe. Uh, uh, I have spent since April negotiating our a renewal of our lease. Man, it was like pulling healthy teeth. <laughs> so that is done, um, and, and we will sign soon. And, but I, I guess like any negotiation, you know, it's never, it's never easy, right? No, definitely, definitely, definitely not easy. I mean, uh, I want to want to go back on the. We talk about your experience working twenty years in the industry, and also when you were in Serbia and you decided you want to come to U.S. And we all had our perception of the United States before coming here. So, what was your perception of U.S. and expectations, and how that changed when you touch touch the ground here? And uh, could you could you go back and just remember a couple of a couple of things, and maybe some stories, some things that you actually left a big impact on you. I mean, I came to U.S. 2009, and I, I did a test run because, you know, uh, Serbia is our home, and I, I love to go there, and that's where my family is, right? So, so it's very dear in my heart always, and I go there twice, three times a year. Big shout-out to everybody there now. Hi, Mom. Uh, she won't understand what we're saying, but <laughs> she'll just look at, she'll the, watch, she'll she'll look at the video and be happy, right? Like any, any, any mom. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so uh, I mean, I, I had a test run, and 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 and, and, uh, and thank God I had a staging process at Employees Only. So uh, I met uh, Dushan Zaric, who's one of the the founders. When I was, I was being the the general manager and the bar manager of uh, Magazine, and Magazine was a uh, was a cocktail oriented nightclub, a first nightclub in Belgrade that wasn't playing domestic music. That was playing just foreign music. No domestic, not one day had a domestic day. And, and it was a, a super different approach and a very cool approach and, and very alternative uh, Belgrade people, individuals in Serbia were going out because they were looking for that vibe, right? So, so, uh, so that's where I met him. He, he had a, he had a, a class and, and, and we, we just connected. So, so after, I think after, I don't know, a year after, uh, I said, hey, you know, I might be looking to, to change uh, 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 territories or places where, where, where I work because I saw Serbia as like uh, FIBA, you know, right? Uh, as Euro, Euro League, right? And I wanted to play in the NBA, you know? <laughs> Definitely the NBA. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted, I wanted to see, I always wanted to test myself out, you know, and see, you know, because I wanted always to work with the best and I always wanted to see the best, you know? So, so I asked him, you know, uh, how can I, and he was like, listen, like, uh, we can, we can offer you, because I was asking him about, you know, places and different things and how that would function and how you can actually make it happen. And he was like, listen, I can, uh, we, do, we have this thing called, uh, called an apprenticeship. It's kind of like how uh, American uh, or any, any chef from any country goes to France and uh, you work, you, you, you study and you don't get a lot, but you, you upgrade yourself as a, as a, 
chef, as a professional, you know, in New York, and in New York, all the musicians come, all the actors go there. Well, New York and LA, but yeah, okay. And and then oh, any any anybody that's uh, that's that's a uh, that's looking to boost their professional background, musician, whatever, they go to New York, right? New York is like the mecca, I believe. So that also interests me. So 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 I went there after they were very happy. Uh, uh, that I reached out, we had a really nice connection in, in Serbia. And, and I was there for a month, and after a month, Igor Haji Smilovic, who, who I'm saying hi to, Dushan and Igor, uh, in this, uh, uh, if they get a chance to see it, uh, he offered me a job. He was like, why don't you give me your passport, like a joke way. So I'm like, come on. He was like, you know, why don't you stay? And I was like, you know, I would love to. I had my bar bartending school at the time in Serbia. Uh, I had to finish university not for me i never wanted to go for it in the first place <laughs> for my mother uh, she got the diploma so i had a lot of stuff that 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 i was uh, uh waiting for so so um so i couldn't but when i finished after two years i reached back again i reached out to igor i was like is the job offer still there he said 100 percent i think i sold my car we sold the bar school it was called belgrade bartending academy uh very, very nice school we had uh, with my friend Andrea Ristic. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. I just packed my bags and, and, and that's it. Again, half of the luggage was books, <laughs> uh, cocktail books. Uh, I used to read a lot all the time. All the time I would have a cocktail book. And, and my experience in New York was, 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 was very cool. Uh, it was very nice. I, I loved the diversity of the bar culture, the diversity of, the, of any culture, of all the cultures restaurants i love the busyness you know you're always on the you're always on the move uh you know you, you i love the subway i loved everything i loved how the subway smell very strange you know like everything <laughs> that's, something, that's something unusual everything that irritates you to me was like wow when you're inspired motivated i think yes. everything yes all the senses yes. are different for yes right? the traffic i loved it the people like uh, bumping on the streets i loved it every you know it's like <laughs> uh, uh, you know, you would roommate, I would love that, you know, you know, if you ask somebody now to roommate, they'd probably, you know, tell you you're crazy, you know, so, so, uh, yeah. It was it easy to assimilate and get into the culture and with people, I mean, New York is a lot international, there's a lot of, a lot of people everywhere, so I assume it's easy, but some people, even U.S., you know, a lot of people say, oh, we can't, get, we don't have a lot of friends, yeah. people are not that friendly, I mean, I guess to each other or whatever, but I never... I never, I mean, never experienced something like that. But how about you? When getting, getting all the social life in order and just getting yourself checked in in New York. Okay, I'm here. How long it took you to say, okay, I'm a New Yorker now? I, I mean, this is, this is my city. I mean, I felt like that since day one, I have to admit, you know, because I just don't feel like I should be considered out of place. That's my kind of philosophy, you know, and I feel like that for everybody. Like, I don't think anybody should feel out of place anywhere. Why? You know, what's the difference? You're here, so... Exactly, I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everybody, everything everybody else is. Why am I different? So that was my mentality, and of course, I have to say, I started... Uh, I, I, uh, another thing that is super important, that's, you know, very hard, you know, you get a job straight off the bat. Like, I remember coming, I landed, the same night that I landed, I came to, I went to see Igor. Igor was working at Macau, he was bartending at EU at Macau Trading Company. Macau Trading Company is the sister uh, bar of employees only. Uh, and he said, hey, what's up, you know, when did you arrive? I said, just now. He said, just now you arrived. I said, yes. He was like, you want to see New York? You want to go out? When do you want to start working? I was like, can I start tomorrow? He was like... You want to start working tomorrow? I was like, yeah. Eager and ready. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. He was like, okay. So he already put me, he put me, I believe, uh, uh, I had two or three nights at employees only and one night at Macau or two nights at, I don't know. Uh, it was, it was, it was uh, one and the other because I think at that time it was impossible to just get uh, a place at employees only because nobody leaves and the shifts are so little. See, so like they had a, they, their generation was like 13 years of bartenders before it, it, it rotated. So it's, it's very hard to, to enter that bar, you know. Like, can you, you know, it's hard to name establishments that keep a track record of 13 years and up of, of team members, you know. So, and I, I'm very grateful for him, to him, 
He actually celebrated his 50th birthday at Swizzle. Oh, oh nice. That's, yeah. That's, that's great that you keep, keep after so many years, you still keep, keep up with people. Oh, yeah. Right? And they're still good friends. People, you know, a lot of, a lot of people from everywhere, they, they think United States, there's no work-life balance. People mm. think they just work. Technically, you work a lot. You know, yeah. how was it for you? I mean, I know how how much were you working back home, but what's the how, how that influenced you? How how do, how do you feel about that? They're just having working a lot, not having a lot of social life, a lot of socializing a lot. In Serbia, I assume it's way more. So how how, how what, do you, what do you think? What do you think about that when you flew down here? I mean, you know, I am I'm I'm very obsessed about this uh, craft and this profession. So to me, it it didn't make a problem for me. Number one, number two, my roommate was Uro Jukic, who I'm going to say, I think you know the individual. Uh, <laughs> Definitely know him. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to say hi to him uh, sure. by this. So uh, he was my roommate, you know, and, and, and uh, us two just uh, sharing something with another individual when you arrived makes it much more easier, you know, and, and, and uh, we, had, we had an amazing time in New York, me and him. Just my last year, year in New York, we, we weren't roommates anymore. Uh, but uh, uh, obviously, he's still one. Of, he was my he was one of my best men on my wedding, so he's still one of my best friends, if not the best friend. So, uh, so that made it easier. The employees only and Macau Trading Company, at the time when I was there, it was such a great group of people. So when 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 you walk in, you always feel like you feel like you're. You, you've been there for 13 years, for 10 years, for five years. They make you feel so welcome, you know? So, so they, they made it also easier for me to accommodate to New York, you know? I remember me and Urosh, we didn't know much. So, you know, in Serbia, everything you buy in the center, mostly. So we, so we thought that we had to go from, we, we, were, we lived in Queens, Astoria, that's in New York. We thought we had to go to Manhattan to buy. So we, we would be dragging stuff to Astoria and then after a week, we figured, hey, hey, Bozo, we, <laughs> we, got, we got some stores here, too. So it was, uh, it was a learning curve for a lot of things. But uh, everything you had to ask for, uh, you can ask for. You know, we had a lot of friends, uh, Bratza, uh, I- Ivan, Ivke, Milos, uh, a lot of friends, you know, that, that were the there. The social aspect, you were not missing, bottom line. You know, Correct. That's, that's, that's what matters. I mean, a lot of people get stuck into working. You work and work. And you lose track of everything but also a lot of people get uh-huh. disappointed with us because they just come here and they work a lot they try hard they work for years and you have some aspirations some dreams and they don't ha- they don't happen to show up it's just out of nowhere you you think yourself as a failure you know so a lot of people end up feeling like that how to why do you think that is and how how would you get back from that and just change your change your mindset in a way i mean keep in mind working in hospitality like um, you're always surrounded with people you know, and you're constantly talking to somebody, you're constantly moving, you're constantly telling, hey, I need this, hey, I need that, did you see that, hey, did you see this? So you're kind of like socializing all the time, you know, and, and if your friends know you're working, they'll come see you. So you are working, but you're still having your social circle, still right? socializing. I think, uh, I, I, I don't think just in U.S. I know cases uh, connected to my further family where uh, an individual wanted to go to Sweden, and, and, and they expected, they finished all these big universities in Serbia and, and they were very intellectual, very smart. And they accepted, they, not accepted, they thought that they were going to be these big engineers in Sweden. And it just doesn't work that way. When you're new to a system, you know, there's a certain way things are done. There's a certain way, for instance, what's crazy, and, and, and I just remember now and I forgot, and uh, I still think it's a bit crazy, and Urosh, my ex-roommate, and one of my best friends can detest to this. In New York, nobody cares about the resume that you have outside of New York. So, for instance, for Urosh, because he was working at cruise lines, he put all these cruise lines, and he's one of the best uh, hospitality individuals one can hire. He couldn't find a job because New York wants New York experience. So, so, so you just have to, it's like this. First of all, you know, let's say like this. Let's, let's, let, let, let's consider it like you sitting at a, at a board game. So what you need to first find out is if you're playing chess or dominoes. And then you have to learn the rules. And then you can't just be great at chess for first day, right? So exactly. it's going to take, and listen, anywhere. We were just talking about it here in Serbia 
to to make a big business and how everything is connected and how you need to maybe know the right people or etc cetera, etc cetera, know the rules of the game every city has the, so you know it's not just uh, you you leaving a motherland and coming to us i think it's anywhere you know it's anywhere you have people i have a lot of friends in serbia you know that maybe aren't at a position or a place in life where they want to be and they didn't cross an ocean they didn't they didn't uh, immigrate they didn't change things right so um it's, a, it's, a, it's a sacrifice to a point, you know. A lot of people are not willing to sacrifice, and if you want to get big results, you got to sacrifice a lot. So, what do you think about the short-term trade-off or long-term? You know, it's just it's it's somehow I feel it's needed. A lot of people are willing to put up with it, but what do you think about it? I think I think either either you have a thick skin and you can you can uh, go through the coprivas, go through the you know. Through the how you say that? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Anyways, go through the bushes. Go the bushes and <laughs> go through the needles, <laughs> right, uh, of the bushes, um, or 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 you just don't and 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 just know that you know comfort is not an option. Because back home we have a big comfort. Back home, man, no matter how old you are, your mom will still make you the best meal like you were ten years old. Uh, you will not uh, uh, be judged uh, cultural wise of staying uh, well okay perhaps maybe by some but whatever but uh, you can you know you have your comfort right you, you so just though no, there's no comfort you know and but here's the here's the mentality short term versus long term what can you make short short term you know some stuff but big things you can't nothing big you can't do in a short amount of time technically some people are lucky or it, it just happens to them or but also they set themselves up for that luck you know luck of doesn't course. doesn't fall from the sky i mean we just talked about it prior to our talk we we you know joe rogan or you know we mentioned um uh, the 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 um, the the paul brothers right so uh, how long have they been on the scene of 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 a your of profession years. yes a lot of years a lot well of years. well well technically joe rogan is your profession but it's a segment all, of it it's all media it's the podcast uh, interviews uh, some 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 content for some kind of content for but i think biggest mistake people make is they look like let's say they look at uh, your latest whatever you're doing and and they automatically associate the start with that why don't you associate with the day that that person, whoever it is, sat on his chair or her chair and was like, hmm, what do I want to do? Yeah, I could start a podcast. Okay, shit, what the, what I need for that? Let me get a book. Aha, uh-huh, this microphone. Aha, uh-huh, this light. Aha, uh-huh. what? I need a sound tech guy. And that just that alone, I'm assuming, is a week. It, it take, everything takes time. It depends how much time you put in. In it, you know, even plants—you gotta water the plant if you want it to to grow. That that, that that's how it works. I mean, but lot, also, I mean, living, getting older, you got more responsibilities. You gotta do more stuff. How do you stay disciplined, focused, and not, not get distracted by a lot, a lot of stuff? You know. I mean, it's it's what's important to you. You know, if it's important to you, you won't get distracted. It's simple. I'm not gonna go into the philosophy of, you know, th- there's a lot of uh, analyzations and segments on that. But I think, man. Bottoms down, when everything is like cleared, if it's important to you, you won't let it go. If it's important to you, you wake up, you think about it. Pure and simple. If it's important to you, you will say, hey, listen, sorry, I can't do this, I can't do that. Tomorrow, I gotta, I don't know, wake up at five because I gotta go for the sale. There's a big sale of microphones or there's a class on a mic or I don't know. If it's important to you, you'll do it. And it's, it's, if it's really important to you, You'll maintain it for a year, two years. And you it, love doing it also. That's what matters. So if you don't true. like doing it, you could just do it because, I mean, also people like money, so that's an end goal, but they're working to get to the money. But if you actually enjoy and love doing something, it doesn't feel like work. True, true. But you know what? It is also like, there's also another side to that coin. Like GSP, he says he doesn't like fighting. And he's one of the greatest fighters that, that has uh, competed discipline, in UFC. Pure discipline. You just... there, I think there comes a point also... Uh, sorry, to come to a certain point, you have to love, my opinion. But uh, when you come to a certain level, like, like GSP did, it just becomes so easy for you to perform on such a high level 
of course, you constantly improve, right? Depending on what kind of individual you are, but it gives you the space to live your private life. Because when you, when you come to a certain level, uh, it's easier for you to maintain that level and then you can focus more on your, your other side of life without losing that. So, and I think by then, either you still love it or you love having the time for your family or whatever you're doing and then it, you stay in that game, maybe. So I think there's two types of sides. I think it all depends like what is happening to you. That's for sure. What do you what do you think are most common misconceptions about United States from let's say Serbia perspective or somewhere from outside? I don't know, man. Like try not to listen to that crap, you know. Um I think there can be a misconception for any country, right? You know, so no, let, let's focus on living here, like living wise. Not just talking country in general, just living wise, lifestyle, <laughs> you know. I mean I know I know everybody thinks uh, from my friends that uh Ah, you live there. Ah, you have no problems. Ah, you live there. Ah, you know, it's, yeah. Pff. You know, like, we're not, we're not going to talk, uh, we're not going to, like, uh, talk about your problems because, bro, yeah, you there's can. A, there, there's, a, there's a tree and you just harvest the money from Correct. the tree every year. That's what, Correct. that's what, I think even older people think about yeah. that the most. The younger people, I think they kind of know, but yeah. older folks, they just assume. No, younger too. Younger too? Yeah, my friends too. <laughs> No, they yeah. think you just came here, you just come here, that's it, end yeah. of the road. But you just somehow got yourself a ticket, yeah. you know, to, to play the game. But you got to play the game. A game is it's NBA. So you, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, I I I don't care much about misconceptions because think about this: it's just somebody else's perception on the base of how their life was leading to that point, leading to all the information and the input they had, plus their you know desires and and their so you know, man. I think I think everybody's uh, okay. How's your life in the U.S.? I mean, I'm still here. Right. I, we have option to go anywhere. Right. But both of us are still here. I Correct. think that answers everyone's question. You can complain. Even people who complain, I always say, if it's not good enough, you can always leave. Whoever is complaining about it. So it, it means, and so people are still coming here. All over the world, they're coming. They're fighting their lives to get here. And yeah. you're already here, and you complain, you can't do it. it, it it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and and for instance, I think the reason why we came here is the reason why we stayed. Reason, you know? the reason, I mean, for some reasons you change, but original reason is still here. Mm. We, we always, that, that desire still pulls us through. And that's why you wake up every day. You knew why you came here. And mm. you're still here because of that reason. And you, you're going for something. So that's, that's why, that's why you know, working yourself, getting better, or learning new yeah. stuff, meeting people. But also a lot of folks, they come here, they just, that's why I'm asking about misconceptions because they all, a lot of people come here and they think it's done. Then you come here, and then you're like, okay, that's what I'm not what I was expecting. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, but it's doable, and it's not. That's why, like talking to you, you perfect example that you can do some stuff. But it took a lot of work, took a lot of time. Nothing just happened to you. You worked for so many years, and you tried, and you're still working on it. Yeah, if you, it's gonna deteriorate if you don't work on it. I agree. I agree. I mean, you know, you should never let it go, right? You should never let it go, and and. Uh, I, I do admit, uh, I do admit uh, this, connection, this, uh, this connection is good. You refresh yourself, you know. Uh, you know, I always say my bar manager, Jeremy, he went on a first vacation uh, just because, you know, he loves, he loves the work and he loves the bar and he loves Swizzle. He also has a Swizzle tattoo just like me. Just like me. Mira just got one. Oh, yeah, right. I That's mentioned I Mira. This, yes. Um, uh, Nathan obviously has for a long time. Jason, my partner too. So, so a lot of people have... have um, have have it so so uh, i i think he just had this vacation and and that's why i started this my my mind went uh, he, he came back super refreshed and it's important you know so 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 you also need to uh, inject yourself with that enjoyment and detaching and not thinking because that will bring you uh, more creativity towards your business because if you're constantly thinking about it eventually you're gonna start being angry and then what you're projecting on that business out of an anger standpoint will not be Never as... a good thing. Exactly. Not be as fruitful. And then your team, your staff is going to start feeling that uh, anger. Or actually, whatever point you want is going to be de delivered to them in an anger receptive way. And then you'll just crack down on your team. Or you will just deteriorate your, your bar, in this case, or a brand. So, uh, you know... Uh, I think staying in it is important, but you also have to, you know, be smart about it. That's that's amazing. So I was I was gonna ask you, 
Uh, tell me about the Shlivovis cocktail. We talk about mm, spirits yeah. from specific countries. Tell me about that more. So, so right now we're using Branco Rakia. It's a, a Rakia from Belgrade. Uh, I, I was waiting for a long time to use a Serbian Rakia in the cocktail. Um, uh, Shlivovis cocktail, why, why it was created, why I created it at Swizzle. Um, so I call it Swizzle, but full name is Swizzle Rum Bar and Drinkery, as we know. Um, uh, so uh, why, why, I, why it was created in Swizzle was because, number one, I, I am very proud of, of my motherland, my home, uh, my, our, our country. So I wanted to have a cocktail and I wanted, my hope, my goal for that cocktail is what Moscow Mule is for vodka or what Caipirinha is, uh, what Cachaca is for Caipirinha. So for this cocktail to be two Shlivovits. So my goal is slowly, and this is a, man, this is a 30 year plan. This is not a one year plan. So my goal is eventually uh, for the Shlivovits cocktail to be ordered all over the world and promoting our plum brandy uh, uh, that is signature to our country. And that is my goal. So uh, we have a plaque. I know when you come, you see it. It says home of the Shlivovits cocktail. And then a lot of people ask about it. And, and to be honest with you, the previous brand that we used was a Czech brand. And um, I, think, I think they were surprised by how much Shlivovitz we go through in Miami. They're like, whoa, what is, what, you know, I don't know how much uh, other places go that, that, you know, that have Rakia too or Shlivovitz. But for a non-standing cocktail bar, we do an amazing amount of, of, of Shlivovitz selling. Of, yeah, of going through Shlivovitz. So, so that was my goal with the, with the, with the Shlivovitz cocktail. Um, it has a bit of, so the ingredients that it has uh, for, for, for people that maybe, uh, I'm sure they can find it online, but if not, so obviously you have a good pour of two ounces of rakia. You have uh, a bit of uh, simple syrup. You have freshly squeezed daily lemon juice. You have plum wine. You have... Uh, um, you have green chartreuse or genepi, let's say green chartreuse. You have absinthe, angostura, and egg white. So uh, I wanted to shock with the presence, because you know Shlivovitz is very potent, it's very present. So I wanted to shock the palate with the anise intensity and of absinthe. Uh, obviously the absinthe is in dashes, so it's not a, main, it's not a huge component, but it still, it still lingers. So I wanted to shock the palate with such a presence and, and, and I think thinking uh, Shlivovitz and absinthe is like totally crazy and absurd because why would you combine the two? It's enough that one makes you crazy. Now you're combining two to make you crazy. So, but it's a very small amount. How does a combination with meze on the side go? Very good. Very good. Perfect. With rakia, meze is always good. O always, <laughs> always welcome. That's a, that's a perfect, perfect side dish. Always welcome. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, that's amazing. So uh, we don't have a lot of meze in Miami. I, I mean, the Greeks do. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's yeah, not the. I don't know. It maybe with wine mostly. Maybe it's like a chakur. I mean, chakur chakur place. Chakur that that's like it's getting more popular. It's more with the wine places and stuff. Correct, like a cheese and uh, chakuri platters. Oh, yeah. boards. Tell me when we talk about your work, you do all the stuff, you know, there's also a life to live besides that, you know, you get to sleep, you get to do, what do you do to unwind? You said you're one of your coworkers, he travels, he does some stuff. What do you do to unwind? And was he having any hobby or something that you just do when to get off, get, get, get away from everything? I mean, I love to spend time with the people I love. You know, I love that. Uh, I love to spend time with my wife. Um, I love to work out. So sometimes I arrange my day compared to the... So for instance, I was thinking, okay, we're going to do this podcast. When am I going to work out? Before or after? Okay, so I'm going to work out after. So I ate, uh, I ate uh, shrimp with a tomato sauce and I ate uh, a couple of cheeses. So I don't want to be full so I can actually do the workout. So, so to me, it's that. And I love to do it uh, uh, less outside, but I love, I love outdoors. I love to use what we have here, the ocean, man. It's beautiful, you know. I just went, I just celebrated my friends, Ilya. You know Ilya. Ilya's birthday, we rented a boat. It was amazing. So from now on, I made a, I made a, how do you call it? I swore we're going to do it. We're going to do it. It's not an empty conversation when you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. See you soon. Well, it never happens. No, we put in the calendar. It's done. It's going to happen. So uh, next, actually, next, next month. 
next month because we did it this month next month we're gonna go uh, for another boat ride and every month we're gonna do it at least once nice nice so that's that's i mean in miami beautiful weather you gotta you gotta yeah. do some stuff you can't just be inside and also besides summer when it gets really hot and have some hurricane see some rain yeah. it's really tough to find an excuse not going outside you know you, you don't live in new york or back in belgrade you're getting rainy cold you're like okay i can just stay in but here there's not excuses like that man you can it's impossible to be depressed in miami yeah it's this, almost impossible yeah, this it's really the sun is just. I'm always saying it's just even if you're extremely broke, you, you don't know what you do. If you go outside, the sun hits you. Cannot be that sad, you know. You can't technically, but it's just it, it's tougher. That's why people. I mean, in more if you live in northern northern countries, there that's how they make more money. They're more productive because they have to be right just to sustain. You have to worry about the winter, the cold. Like here, you don't have to prepare a lot. You know, that's just it's always nice, nice, nice weather and nice stuff happening. So there's not a lot of preparation going for. I agree. I mean. We were we were all broke. I was broke. I'm sure you were broke. Everyone, you know, everyone going is. you know growing up. You know, remember, you're, you're the generation probably of the embargo days, right? Yeah. Sanctions and the embargo. Yeah. So basically, what we had, um, what we got, two liters of milk. No, was it one liter of milk and two breads? Or I was, was a little it? to know, but I know I heard stories of how how it was okay. bad. It was bad. I will, I will go to wait in lines. I don't remember because I would know where the stash was. Uh, I would take and all you can get, no matter. What is two liters of milk and one bread? Or it sound, doesn't sound good. Probably two breads and one milk, I think. Uh, but uh, we were broke and we were still happy. You can, and, uh, you can be happy in Miami. You learn how you can be happy with some You can be happy stuff. in Miami. You don't need a lot. For instance, like, you know, I'm sitting, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm sitting, I look at the palm tree move. Man, I love it. I can stare at it for days. I'm enjoying it, you know, the ocean, the wave. I love the smell of the ocean. You can pick anywhere. It doesn't have to be even crowded. You, you can be alone. There's so many nice spots in Miami where, where it's just like you have a waterfront and it's beautiful. We have so many nice walks um, uh, for walking, walkways, yeah, for yeah, running at so. night, for a lot of stuff. Man, it's, it's, it's beautiful. You can have so much fun. And obviously, you know, being close to South America, we, we have a, a, lot, a, a big influx of, of a lot of cultures, obviously European, South American. We got, we're, get, we're getting more and more New Yorkers. We have a lot of New Yorkers, but, but we know with the food and the cuisine, uh, man, it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing spot. The first time we, we had an interview, we talked about, you got about your first book. You got your sec second book. Second now. book. Congra yeah. Congratulations on thank that. You, thank you. Uh, yeah, tell you have me, it. I see yeah, it right there. I have to have it. Tell me, tell Thank me more about it. What's the What's the difference? What are you? You mind if I take it out? Of course, of course. I'll show it to the camera also. So, so this is the soft cover, uh, right here. So it took me. This is a this this is this a nine year side. project. I can put it back. Yeah. Right? Same. So it's a nine year project, uh, and it has five hundred and twenty seven pages. Uh, it, Obviously, it was a it was a project. Like I, you know, when I was bartending at Employees Only in Macau, you said how long you what was the difference in work, and and so in Serbia I worked maybe ten times less than U.S. Uh, the, the the schedule in New York was next. You leave your home, I believe, at noon. You come to work at one. You prep for three hours. If you don't stop, and you prep for three, I I for me because as because I'm very detail oriented. I'm super obsessed. So. Three hours it takes me, I don't stop. If I'm texting or calling a friend, I'm doing it while I'm prepping the bar. Because if I, if I stop and I give a call, I will not set up the bar to, to, to that level. So three hours, you're already prepping. So one hour commute, three hours prepping, that's four hours. And then you work uh, from four to four. So you work uh, 12 hours. So that's 16 hours. It's crazy shit. Minus in New York, subways go... Uh, for, for those who know, I will repeat, go uh, lesser. The schedule is more slower. So forget about, you know, calling a cab. Every, every dollar means. So uh, means a lot. So, so you wait for the subway. So, yeah. Um, but I loved it. I loved it. I had a lot of fun with it. So when I would come home, I would write pages until I fall asleep. Crash. You have to. And then I wake up, I'm like, fuck. So I take the laptop just to see that they didn't shut. The, it's still there. If I didn't save, I save. I didn't lose anything, thank God. So it was, it was step by step. Uh, uh, the book has, has had a huge success. Obviously, we sell it at my bar, Swizzle. And we sell it at my second bar, Delirio Tiki Bar by Swizzle. So, uh, so far, we sold close to 7,000 copies, which is amazing. And online sales. So, so 
So it means uh, all the tours and everything, they contribute so much. Uh, it opens up new markets and, and stuff. And, and I think it's the word of mouth too that's helping because the marketing behind it is just my personal uh, uh, social uh, marketing. So, so there, there, there is no, no, this, you know, you know, big uh, funds for it. Uh, for the launch, there was, uh, but that stopped. So, so uh, I'm happy with it, you know. And and I mean, the reason why I wrote the book was because when I was 18, there wasn't. It was a different time, you know. Uh, people weren't so eager to teach you, you know. They they want to share their knowledge, you know. Everything was kind of more or less a secret. Why you stir this much? Why this? Why this? So. You know, you had to you had to uh, get CDs from abroad, get books from abroad, research. It took you a lot more time, you know. And I was listening to some other podcasts, not just in bartending, in in fighting too. I heard and a lot of stuff, like a lot of crafts went through the same thing. I guess you know everybody kind of you know the the world changes, you know. So so I wanted to, uh, why I wrote this book was for myself when I was eighteen. So if there's a myself right now that's eighteen and that's eager, that's for that individual. Here you go everything you know, run with it and and do your best so so that's why i wrote the book that's the that's the first one and you get to the second one what's the second one uh, mostly focused on so the second one is much more detailed comprehensive on psycho on uh, psychology uh, movement uh, communication dealing with stress uh, uh, work related uh, fatigue related but also uh, fine dining related um, there's a lot more cocktails, a lot more recipes, a lot more history. And uh, there's also a lot more details on food, on coffee, on cigars. So how to make, how a cigar is made, how to cut a cigar, how to smoke a cigar, how to, how to tell if a cigar has quality, a lot of, a lot of restaurant ethic, right? How do you signal with a fork and a knife? All things that I think are important for an individual, but also for a bartender, which is an individual. It's just an individual with a profession. So, so anything that's important in my book uh, about that, it's, in, it's, it's there. So everything I consider super, super uh, important. And, you know, uh, I, it has very little pictures. So I wanted to give as much as possible. Uh, I respect when, when you give a lot. I think every, everybody's dollars earned is... is, is uh, is a diff difficult process, so you, you, uh, you're supposed to get the best value for whatever you're paying. And that was my goal, to give the best value and to give the most. And when I thought the book was done, I was like, okay, add another page, come on. You can say something more about this, come on. Come on, this something more, something more, something That's more. That's dedication right there. Until, until I was like, man, that's it, uh, that's, there's no more. And now, finally, there, the third book is slowly coming together to, uh, but not as... Uh, intense of a tempo is this one because um because uh uh yeah i, I want to take it a bit more easier on on on, on that all right definitely wanna, uh, before we wrap up you want something to add maybe or no nothing to add i think uh it was good to see you again for sure i'm glad we it. got i'm glad we got together i'm glad we thank you for the coffee no, no, no thank problem. you for always, the coffee thank you for always, it's always a pleasure always tell people where, to get to, get to, where they can find you, mm. you know, swizzle and uh, book and everything yeah so you can find me you can find me at swizzle rum bar and drinkery uh it's a speakeasy on 1120 collins avenue on south beach it uh, we're celebrating our fourth year anniversary september 19th and then obviously we're signing another lease so we're gonna we secured our space there for 12 years so you can find me there i'm there every day almost more or less in and out i'm behind the bar monday and thursday you can find me on monday and thursday there if not you can find me at delirio tiki bar by swizzle that's our sister bar our tiki bar and uh yeah you can always contact me on instagram or, or email me or whatever all right thank you so much for doing this brother appreciate it Thank Thanks you everyone for watching.